Hi, Candace. How are you doing? I am good. How are you doing? How are you feeling? <laughs> I am feeling much better. <laughs> <laughs> so I had COVID. <laughs> yeah, was it was fun. your time to shine. Yeah, it was a plague for about, you know, a week. <laughs> yeah, you had it. I think the same kind of reaction I did, the the really sleepiness. I actually was not really sleepy when I had it. Oh, which was weird. You have the post COVID fatigue. Yeah. Well, I think the reason why though is because um so fun fact, I decided I was going to do the whole new year new me starting, you know, very very early in the year in February. <laughs> <laughs> which is when you... most people start their new year new me. Yeah. Um so the first day I did 40 minutes of like straight cardio and then I started feeling really sick. <laughs> Your body was rejecting yeah. it. So I have not gotten COVID in the entire two years that it has been around. Mm-hmm. And then literally did one day of cardio and got COVID. <laughs> so I think the universe is telling you. Yeah, it was like, stop do that. Car- Don't move. Don't Get move. fat. What are you doing? Um, but yeah, so I, uh, it was, it sucked. Um, it started just like with a, like, uh, with a high fever yeah. And then like, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> I like knew immediately too. And I ended up taking a rapid test and it came back negative. And so I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe I just have like a cold. And then like four days later, I was like, there's no fucking way this is a cold. <laughs> so I took another rapid test and like literally it was like, I put the thing together, walked away, came back like two seconds later. And there was like the second pink line. I was pregnant basically, you know, <laughs> I know. Cause we were, we were talking about meeting. And then, like, you're like, I'm not feeling well, but yeah. it's not COVID. And then we're like, okay, we'll meet Saturday night, and right? I think everything's fine. And then, I think it was that Friday, you mm-hmm. text me, and you're like, um, I got COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> Can't record. So, it's been a while since we've... Yeah, I feel a little bit out of practice. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, so hopefully it's not gonna keep happening that, like, we have a couple of... We record yeah. some, then we're out of sync, and then we... Yeah. Get back. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll get back on schedule. But yeah, that reminded me for mm. some reason. Um, one of our listeners actually wrote to me about the doll episode. <gasps> yeah. Tell me. Um. So one of our friends, uh, Mary, her sister. Oh, I was like, we have friends. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot, but that was oh, yeah. one of them. Okay. Um, her sister actually wrote to me and she just, she was like, do you want to know a funny doll story basically? Always. And I was like, of course. Yeah. And um, so she had this doll, Mary, Mary had this doll. Um, That was like, it was like one, and it was the nineties. So it was like one of those dolls that like wet itself or ate things. Mm, or like of one course. of those weird fucking yeah. things that they had. And um, apparently this one got recalled. <laughs> Because it had, like, this motorized thing that it would eat something, and then it would, like, kind of, like, go through, like, the motor. Have diarrhea. And, and we'll put it back out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it it started to eat Meredith's hair. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I knew. I, I think I this? knew about it doing that to Meredith, but there was a whole thing about that, that it was really yeah. dangerous for kids. That's why it got recalled, because it was, like, literally, like, she called for Carrie, and Carrie came running. <laughs> and she was, like, the zombie doll was, like, attached to her sister's <laughs> oh my head, God. just, like, chomping. <laughs> That's and terrifying. Like, yeah, it's terrifying. So um, it was just, it was funny. So she told me that story, and I was like, "Well, we will definitely be sharing that." For oh, that seven. is that is really fun because yeah, so I, I'm remembering that now. I didn't have one of those munchie dolls, but <laughs> I just like like I said on the episode, I don't understand any of those Betsy Wetsy fucking it's a lot of work. weird. It, why? Like it's dumb, and like why yeah. would you want a doll that wets itself? I don't want people who wet themselves. No. I don't want a doll that does either. So I was watching that show Ghosts. You told me to watch. Oh, really? I, I watched all three seasons. I'm, I knew I'm you're gonna uh, obsessed with it. I think it, it's the most. If it, people want to watch, it's called Ghosts. It's yeah. on HBO Max or probably yeah, other like, British things. As well. I think it's on the BBC, but um, yeah, which, but mm, you can get it on HBO Max. My friend in England was like, "That looks like a stupid show." I was like, "It's adorable." Kyle even cried during one Did episode. Did he really? Which, and, oh, well, don't tell me. Actually, yeah. yeah. Um, um, but I want to marry the captain. Oh my god, he's so, adorable. But I love him so much. It is. <laughs> it is both like an adorable show. Yeah. It's a collection of ghosts from all different time periods, and all live together in the same house. But there's also just like hilarious little ghost moments, and I I love the whole thing. The comedy is genius. It's not like super dry. It's like perfectly witty and British. I, I really love it. And um, but there's an episode where they're trying to, so the woman of the house can see and react to the ghosts. The guy cannot. Yeah. So the ghosts are trying to communicate with him, and. <laughs> 
they have to then like oh i love that episode they, so they're trying to see like how they can you know talk to him and they end up using a doll's eyes for morse code oh i forgot about and that the, it's so, so like because one of the ghosts has an ability to move things but yeah. he has to do a lot of energy to move anything yeah so he's then like pushing down the eyelids and that had me cackling because i'm just imagining like a little like a doll in the corner which i'm surprised they have not removed in that house already because you would think but, but like I mean... it's just pushing the eyes down to try to get to <laughs> let him know there are robbers in the house <laughs> And I I will say all of you listening go watch that show because it is so funny and but fun fact I was actually on Paramount Plus today and I saw on CBS there's a show called Ghosts and I think it might but, be... yes there's an American version I was just saying is yes. there an American version I that's what I thought immediately saw that and I was like is this the American version I, <laughs> and I it cannot be it. nearly as much fun I doubt it's on CBS yeah no so I don't think it'll be nearly no. as good because the beauty of the British show is that it's going through. The like, time period. The time periods, which yeah. America, we do not have that long of a history in comparison. We have like, what, 300 years, maybe? Yeah. Well, not I even. mean, like, from when it was, you know, quote unquote, settled. Yeah, but, I, mean, I guess you have, like, a but little bit longer. We than have, that. you know, in the British ghost show, you have the caveman. Yeah, Robin, I love It was adorable. Him. Yeah. Um, and then you have someone from, like, the Henry VIII era. And then. Is that. Um, the guy that's had no head? The Deca- yeah, I love him. I can't remember his name, though. I always think of him as the head. Yeah, because he doesn't have, like, a huge, huge part. No, I mean, he's, he's a it. head. Yeah. And most a body time, that walks around. Yeah, I was say, most of the time his body is separated looking for the head. Yeah. <laughs> his head will pop up every now and then. Anyway, um, I, I really love the show. I was not... I like to prepare for when I know, like, there's no more episodes of something. Yeah. And... You weren't ready I for that. I did not know... Well, no, they're, they, they are releasing season yeah. four, but on HBO, there's only season up to season three. Yeah, and who knows when So I four. didn't know that the episode that I was about to watch was the last one. So the oh. next morning, I went to just like, Kat, you want to watch oh, Ghost? No. And I'm like, no! <laughs> yeah, and it's like a Christmas episode, isn't it? Or something? Yeah, which is a very British thing to like, you know, yeah. have a Christmas episode as the The end. first Christmas episode was so funny. So good. Yeah. No, I, I love it. I full... I think it's a very enjoyable. I think it's going to become one of those comfort shows for me that I'll oh, put on in the it. background. Yeah. It's just very funny. You, it's should, all, you should all watch yeah. it. Which is completely unrelated to this week's thing. Yeah, we're not talking about anything and like that. Also, welcome to This Creeps Me Out. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah, we're in such great practice. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Um, so, we're here. Rob's queer. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and Get used to get it. Get used to it. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, we're going to talk not about something supernatural today. Yeah, we we thought since we did... What did we do last week? Fuck, what was episode... Grimm's Fairy Tales, which that was a rager. Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I could, so, and that was more supernatural since it's fairy tales. I wouldn't call it supernatural, but I would call it not... You, you it's wouldn't... It's fiction. It's you not nonfiction. You wouldn't consider um, a little girl's brother turning into a deer supernatural? Oh, about that. Um, I got a follow up to that because it was bothering me how that story was called Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, it was. It's not. That story is not called. It's not. That edition is fucked up. <laughs> it should have not been called Hansel and Gretel. Sometimes that story yeah. will call the characters Hansel and Gretel, but they will never title the story Hansel and Gretel. Well, what they is would it call like? it a brother and sister. Oh. So then why call them Hansel and Gretel? This edition. It makes me angry, and I want to write to the publishers and be like, what did you do? <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I, was, I remember like when you were like, oh, I'm going to say Hansel. I was like, oh, cool, fun. And then you started going, I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> I was so, like, so confused. Um, yeah, no, I was, so I wanted to give an update on, that's normally not called Hansel and <laughs> Yeah, Gretel. that's just normal brother and sister. Brother and sister fawn and stupid fawn. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it was an interesting story. We, we now know. Surprised the shit out of all of us. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, and then the one before that, episode five, was... Creepy Dolls. Creepy... Was that Creepy Dolls? No. No, that was four. Five was Heralds of Death. Heralds of Death, <laughs> yeah. yes. So, so we've been doing a lot of supernatural stuff, so I was like, maybe we should do something that's more like in the realm of the physical. Yeah, which I think you love serial killers more than a lot more people. I find them to be very interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which makes me sound like a serial killer, but I promise I'm not. Um, I like... So I like shows like Mindhunter. Or, yeah, Mindhunter's great. Um, I like movies that kind of talk about forensic science and mm-hmm. going into the detective aspect of it. 
I think I, I like the, the organization of hunting down serial killers. That's what I like. I mean, I mean, also just, like, I feel like most people are just so intrigued by... Oh, yeah. No, I, I loved our forensic science class in high school. Yeah, although that was a pretty fun class. That was weird. It was a... To have teenagers doing that, but... That's true. But I did love to do handwriting analysis. I fucking hated handwriting analysis. Oh, I love it. So fucking much. I think it's so much fun. Um, but there was a cool final in that class where you had to catch yeah. one of the teachers who well, killed somebody. Not- <laughs> <laughs> a teacher would, um, they would like help, they'd work with the teacher of the class who would then, they would organize a crime scene and you had to then solve the crime scene and hunt and figure out which teacher in the school was the murderer. Yeah, but there was like, they gave us like multiple suspects. And- yeah, and you had to figure out like, okay, it's this per- this teacher. Yeah. And there was an occurrence, maybe one or two years where that teacher then would flee from the students going to oh, arrest really? them <laughs> and they'd run around the school and you'd have to try to catch them. That didn't happen with mine. And ironically, the teacher who, um, for mine, who was the, um, the murderer, the murderer was also the teacher who later got arrested. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, it was. not for murder though. <laughs> <laughs> Twist. Yeah, no, he was just a uh, pervert, but, uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. I didn't know that. Yeah, that, so I thought that was kind of funny. That is funny. But, um, just my luck. Yeah, no, but I feel like you, you love a serial killer. I, I don't, I don't love them. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, but you're greatly intrigued. I think it's intriguing that the notion of, like, like, especially like, uh, me and actually Pissy and Sam mm. were talking about this one night while we were playing video games. And it was like, we obviously would never want to live like in a town or like a time like when like when you talk about like Ted Bundy or like yeah. anything like that or like the Zodiac killers anything like that um where like it's all kind of going on around you but there is something kind of like intriguing and adrenaline like rush type feelings of you know being like kind of at home but oh hey don't go outside late at night because there's like, you know, BTK. You know what I mean? Like, it's like... Yeah, for me, it's just like, no. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah exactly. But it's also like, there's like a weird, like, I don't know how... There's like, I, I mean, we are people who also like getting scared. Yeah. And I think, for me, though, the line is, when it becomes really real, like it's a person doing it, I am completely like, nope. Well, of course, I think it's kind of like Want an to adrenaline very... junkie type um, I get thing. that, yeah. Like, you know, like, where it's, like, I realistically would never But, like, to be I contemplate existing. living in a haunted house. Like, well, there you go. Yeah. So, that, to me, is, like... Which I would never want to, because I've done it. You've done it. And, like, <laughs> I think no, thank you. I would, after a week, I'd be done with it. I mean, I guess it really depends, because, like, our, our house, when it, like, obviously it was haunted, and it wasn't always that bad, although there was times when the activity was, like, really, like, crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was never, like... I don't know. It wasn't like there was like a one really bad week. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Not like the movies were making it sound like, you know, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And then one night everything just goes to shit. Yeah, literally. Yeah. (laughs) The house just gets uh, swollen up. up. Uh, Which we'll talk about next episode. Yeah, yeah, but I think, I mean, I'm happy to talk about serial killers. I'm intrigued. Like, I I love the show Mindhunter. There was that one Mm -hmm. movie, Copycat with Sigourney Weaver, that I thought was fantastic. (laughs) And you just saw recently. That I just saw recently, even though it's from the 80s. I mean, everybody knows my favorite movie of all time is Scream, so. (laughs) You do love Scream. I love that fucking movie. Um, And I I mean, I love, like, the classics, like Halloween. Like, Mike Myers. I don't know if I I consider that, like, a serial killer. Okay, why not? Because they're supernatural. Okay, so I'm going to need you to define a serial killer then for me. Give me the Webster's Dictionary version then. A serial killer to me is like a flesh and blood person who is killable, but is actually the one doing the killing. <laughs> so okay. It's like, like, like the thing with like Michael is like, he's a killer, but like you can't kill Michael Myers. No. They've basically, like they've basically blown him up at this point and he comes back every time. It's like Jason, Freddy. They become, you know. they're like serial monsters. Serial yeah. killer monsters. Exactly. Whereas like with Scream, you know, even though Ghostface continues to come back like it's reimagined every movie. there are copycats but, yeah it's always so it's always like a character in the movie who's doing the killing so the scream franchise would be your favorite serial killer type of thing i mean yeah i love ghostface ghostface oh. is fucking freaky as all shit i don't care what anybody says no i know i know some people think it's like not scary i think it's terrifying the concept of being home at well uh, being home alone and getting a phone call from somebody who's trying to kill you oh yeah <laughs> no like, that's not pleasant yeah <laughs> 
don't know you're coming in the house. No. Like, <laughs> I don't like any of that. Yeah. Oh, but now I want popcorn because I was thinking about Drew Barrymore. Oh my popcorn. god. <laughs> Which, by the way, in the nineties, I I remember watching that as a kid, and she's sitting there with the fucking thing on the stove top. Oh yeah. And I was like, we use a fucking microwave. No, what is this shit? <laughs> I remember going. I'm really dating myself. I remember going to the Blockbuster. Mm, the Blockbuster. The, the Blockbuster. I went to the Blockbuster. The Blockbuster. Yeah. And going down the aisle and seeing like. Oh, Scream starring Drew Barrymore. I was like, I like Drew Barrymore. And I'm like, oh, she dies in the first three minutes of the movie. Yeah. Well, do you know they did it on purpose? Oh, yeah. I mean, it works. Because she was originally supposed to play Sydney. No. Yeah. They wanted her to play Sydney. And I think it was actually her idea to have her play Casey and die in the first 10 minutes or whatever. I did not know that. Yeah. And uh, that was, and that's why she's like on the front of them. Because everybody just goes, why is Drew Barrymore on the front yeah. of this movie? And it was because even up until release, they wanted people to think. That she was the Because main... Neb is like in the background. Yeah. So they wanted people to think that she was like, because she's the only, at that time, she was only like, she was like the biggest name. Sure. So um, they, um, yeah, they kind of played the audience. And that's why, that's part of why the movie was so successful is because everybody was, was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> They thought Drew was going to get away. <laughs> so it was like, spoiler alert, oh, well if you've done. never seen the first screen, by the way. <laughs> Which, shame on you, because it came out in like 1997. But Well, I mean, I just saw Copycat for the first time. <laughs> mm. That's a great movie, but that's when, that one's a little bit, um, that's more of like a cult. Class, a cult favorite, I would think. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think most people have probably ever It's seen. not mainstream like Scream. Yeah, I mean, and that's because I think Scream is a lot more, like, action-packed and, like, oh, whatever. Oh, true. Yeah. Whereas Copycat is jokes. more cerebral. Yeah, that too. It is nice and campy, which yeah. I love. <laughs> yeah. But Copycat is fun, especially if you, like... Because we're not going to be talking about the really popular serial... In comparison. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, most people, like... Whenever you talk about serial killers, everybody's like Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, mm-hmm. BTK, uh, uh, the New Orleans Axe Murders. Um, who else? There's a whole bunch of them. Richard Ramirez. That was the one I was thinking. Yeah. Um, was in the Night Stalker. Um, yeah. The Golden Gate Kill. Not the Golden Gate. What is it? I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> You're like I don't know. There's a lot of them. But like that's what I think people first come to mind. For me, I'm also yeah. thinking like Jack the Ripper. Um, Yeah, which I actually, to be fair, Jack the Ripper, I kind of wish we weren't talking about Jack the Ripper a little bit, only because even though I feel like everybody knows who Jack the Ripper is, mm -hmm. I actually don't think most people know, like, his, like, in Did you know there's an Australian Jack the Ripper? Yes, there's also a British, like, I mean, obviously there's British too. (laughs) There's also a British one. (laughs) (laughs) There is a more recent, like, case that there was, like, a Netflix documentary a couple years ago about they were calling it very similar to, like, a oh, Ripper really? case. And, I didn't know that. But this was all a police fuck-up. It was oh, fascinating. Okay. Um, Did they ever figure out who Jack the Ripper was? I don't know. You know what? No, no episode idea. Jack the Ripper. Right yeah, I think we should just do a Jack the Ripper. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, there's a lot about him. There's a lot. So we, we'll and do some, And some fun movies, too. Um, some fun movies, yeah. Well, there's, like, more Johnny Depp, I think. Where, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but we are talking about three different serial killers today that you may yeah. not have heard of before. I can almost guarantee, unless Joe and, I'm sorry, Joe, Joe listen to me, unless Pissy and Sam oh. on my Spooky Gay family talked about um, one of mine, I don't, I don't know if they did or not. I don't think they did. Um, I don't think so. But and I, mean, I know mine is not talked about at all. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> I picked a pretty obscure lady. Yeah. We wanted to go with um, some bigger ones. One of mine I picked for a very specific reason, but I won't share just yet because <laughs> it's for Candace. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then the first one, the first one that we will talk about though, are the Hart brothers. Okay. So the Hart brothers are considered to be like the United States like first serial killers. I did not even know about them. I didn't either. Which thank you Wikipedia and your list of serial killers for me to go through. Sponsored by Wikipedia. <laughs> Literally, I wish. <laughs> I wish to. We should write to them. We we talk about them every mm-hmm. episode. So the Hart brothers were uh, are okay. And forgive me, these names are like what what the younger brother is Wiley Little Harp, who they believe is born William Harper. Wiley. Wiley, which I love that name. I almost named my dog that. So. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, I love that. I wanted a shepherd named Wiley for like Very ever. Cute. Yeah. Um, but then the older brother is uh, Mikaja. Oh, of course. I, I, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's M I C A J A H. We'll go with Mikaja. Yeah, Mikaja. Um, or Big Harp. That's was. Uh, we'll, we'll go with Big. Yeah, and he was born. 
Joshua. So I don't know how we got Tamika. We'll jo- go with Joshua. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with Josh and, and Billy here. Uh, or Big and Little, as they were called. Oh, I like that. That's cute. Yeah, so the top of Wikipedia. So they were born in 1768 for Big and... Before 1770 for a little. Okay, so we're talking about 18th century serial killers. Yeah. In America. Yes. Okay. So, um, and they were... Oh, wait, is that really... Yeah, sorry. Sorry, forgive me. I'm Rob just, can't read. I, <laughs> this is very new for him. <laughs> I'm sounding everything out as we go. So, they were murderers, highwaymen, and river pirates. Explain how one can become a river pirate. I, I think you just kind of pick it up one day. I don't like so it. are you telling me the Passaic River needs a river pirate I, and that <laughs> job can be filled you know by me? Cam- <laughs> I almost called you Cameron, Jesus Christ. Candace, if you get, <laughs> if you can go get a boat and an eye patch, you can go be the river pirate. I can go get a kayak, no problem. You want to be a river pirate, a pirate with a kayak? It's a very small river. It's not that, I mean, I guess it's not that I'm big. talking like the width. Yeah, I have seen the Mississippi, so yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not that. But, I'm gonna start small, then I'll work my way up. That's fair. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, you gotta do. You gotta do some robbing. You know, a so little, you go out little, on a little. kayak, you come back with a yacht. That's you trade up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it goes by a lot of backyards. You can just kinda... just go in. I pilfer and yeah, exactly. I take some things. Get a new eye patch. I upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> oh so they were loyal to the British Crown during the American Revolution. Mm. They became outlaws. Bleepy bloppy bleepy blue. Who really gives a shit what mm-hmm, they did? Mm-hmm. Um, in there, so they're from like North Carolina area. Okay. We don't know exactly. Kind the of the south. Yeah, they are. They're essentially they're from the south. They started in North Carolina. They made their way to Virginia. They're Southern River Pirates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, to give you an idea of what kind of people we're talking about in 1775. They went to Virginia to find overseer jobs on a slave plantation. Oh. So they're not yeah. really like, obviously they're not great people. No. Um, they were involved in the American Revolution and the American Indian Wars. They, but but during, they were sided with the British though, originally. They were, they tried to side with the Patriots, but because of their British loyalties. They were dicks. They were, yeah, they were kind of kicked out. And they, and so they eventually, you know, they, they were like, fine, we won't do that. We'll start a rape gang. <laughs> Oh, yeah. my yeah. God. So they were, yeah. <laughs> Gives you an idea of what these people were like. Um, so I'm just, for this part, I'm just going to read from Wikipedia. Okay. Best of luck to you on your reading journey. Think, I'm actually, this part I'll be fine with. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. <laughs> so it's just their murders and atrocities is what it's, it's called. Serial murders and atrocities. And uh, that just is... a warning. Things will probably get <clears throat> uncomfortable this episode. So if you don't want us to yeah, anything it is about. Serial killers yeah, yeah it generally just didn't. skip to a, the next episode of yeah Pentagrace. sorry i mean these they, they i mean <laughs> if you were if you did listen to my spooky gay family we talked about ed gein <laughs> that's true so, you know yeah. like generally in any of these kinds of um uh which call it uh episodes when you're talking about serial killers it does get a little dicey nice nice wording <laughs> <laughs> so sometime during 1797 the Harps began a vicious crime spree through Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois. Oh, my. Yeah. They later confessed to the killings of a confirmed 39 people, but the estimated combined total, including unknown victims, may number more than 50. Oh, wow. And th- including, like, they were known to be, like, so, like, um, what's the word I want? Um, Prolific? I was going to say agitated <laughs> oh that they even killed like babies it was like anything oh that god. anybody did that like even just upset them they would like oh my dump. god yeah so in 1797 while the ha- while the harps were living near knoxville tennessee which i've been to knoxville very pretty um not as big as i thought it was gonna be but it was really you cool. thought it was gonna be big in my mind because like from <laughs> okay. where we are like in in jersey like if some like if you talk about like the city and you go to the city like uh-huh. new york city is big so and i feel like for some reason i've brought this like mentality with me that whenever i'm going to like a big major metropolitan city it's gonna be like big big. not the case (laughs) like really anywhere like the next big one in my opinion that i've seen is like maybe philadelphia i'm just thinking about a book called like rob's big city (laughs) (laughs) i thought were big (laughs) this one not so so big big. Just literally going city by city yeah. in, in America. And, like, and literally just words on a paper. Yeah. It's like St. Louis. 
not as big as I thought it was going to be. It's like a dick book. It's yeah. <laughs> just like, uh, oh well, yeah. not as big as New York. <laughs> City from a size queen. You know, it's like, like written in like red crayon. <laughs> not so big. Not so like, big. Because like Chicago was big. Chicago was big. <laughs> it was. It was friggin' big. But then, like, um, what's, where else did we go? Um, like, I've been to, what's that one place in Montana that I can't think of? But was it big? No. It was like, <laughs> what's the name of it? But I it's like know. one you would know, too. It's like Billings or something. I can't remember. What's, I like didn't go to ones. Montana with you. No, but there's like a couple, like, there's like towns out there that you, like, know of. That, you, that you're like, this is going to be a big town. Well, no, because in my mind, because it's something famous that we, like, everybody famous knows. Famous does not mean big. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like in my mind, like, like if, so, if I said to you, New York City, that's a big city. Yeah, because we've been to, the, we've been there. We know it's like a fairly large, well, Manhattan's I'm actually aware. not that big, <laughs> but like. Well, yeah, but like, but like, I'm just saying like, cause like in other places they'll be like, oh, you're going to the city. And I'm like, oh, my mind, like, oh, it's the oh, city. Oh, the city. Yeah, oh, like, man. Well, like, but, like, even, like, people, like, like, with, like, people be like, oh, I'm going to Albany. We're going to Albany for the day. So I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to be like huge. You go to Albany, it's like Summit. It's not big at all. Okay. You know? I kind of get where you're coming from, but I'm still thinking it's just Rob's big book of cities. Well, literally, because it's like, if it's a famous place, you think <laughs> you're going to show up and it's going to be like, you know, like this sprawling metropolis. And instead it's no. like a really large town. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like people will call like a city, like Morristown, New Jersey, they'll call that a local city. I would not. I mean, okay. it is. But well, like, this would, but this like, would be very not, helpful like, in no, Rob's big book of yeah, cities. Yeah, but no, but, but here's the, like, if you talk to somebody, like, oh, I'm going to the city, and you're like, oh, what city? And you're like, Morristown. Everybody's like, you're a fucking idiot. Well, yeah, around here. <laughs> it's yeah. like, that's not a city. No, but in maybe the, the older days. Aww. Okay. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would People, love you, to read your book. I, well, you, you, it's coming out. Red okay. crayon and all. I'm going to write it on construction paper. Fantastic. I will <laughs> give you the supplies. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. Back to, back the to big and little. <laughs> back big and little. Um, they were driven from the town after being charged with stealing hogs and horses. They were also accused of murdering a man named Johnson. Big city, little city. Yeah. <laughs> whose body was found in a river covered in urine and ripped open with the chest what? cavities filled and weighed down with stones. That's sick. Yeah, that's fucked up. And obviously they didn't do a good enough job because they found him. So, it was like, so he did not sink, obviously. I mean, I or guess did he they did. they dredge the river? I don't know. Maybe this it was during a their pirate phase? Maybe it was a creek. Maybe this, maybe this is Wikipedia's version of like big cities. Big They're city, calling it a city. river, but it's really just like a stream. It's a poodle. <laughs> what? It's a puddle. It literally, just like a puddle. Out. It rained really heavily. It rained. It was a heavy rain day. Yeah. This became a signature corpse disposal method of the Harp serial killings. What, shitty corpse disposal? I think more the ripping open the chest of oh, okay. stones. <laughs> where they were going with that. <laughs> they reportedly butchered anyone at the slightest provocation. They even murdered babies. So that's what I that's, was That yeah. was your baby line. Yeah. I didn't realize it was in this part. I gotcha. thought it was earlier. Um, from Knoxville, the Harps fled north into Kentucky. <laughs> they entered the state on the Wilderness Road near Cumberland Gap. They are believed to have murdered a peddler named Peyton, taking his horse and some goods. In December, they murdered two travelers from Maryland. Next, a man named John Langford, who who was traveling from Virginia to Kentucky, turned up dead and and a local innkeeper pointed the authorities to the Harps. The criminal pair was pursued, captured, and jailed in a state prison in Danville, Kentucky. They managed to escape, of course. course I don't understand why that's a thing with serial killers and being able to... I mean, it's usually... I don't think it's the case here, mm. but a lot of serial killers are very smart people. Because, <laughs> mm. like, Ted Bundy escaped. Did you ever know that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. Oh, that's right. You watched the, um, I... the movie, right? No. The one with Zac Efron? No. You didn't watch it? No. His butt's in it. Okay. There is a special cameo of Zac Efron's butt in that movie. So if that means anything to you, <laughs> you're welcome. His butt's in oh, it. Oh, so. <laughs> while sitting, I reached my stand goal. <laughs> Look at me go. You're doing it. Um, when a posse, this, this is the word in Wikipedia, when a posse was sent after them, mm. <laughs> the son of a man who assisted the authorities was found dead and mutilated by the harps in retaliation. In the same way? I must, well, I don't know, because it doesn't say that they disposed of the body. It just oh, says okay. mutilated. Maybe, I don't know. So, 
Then on April 27, uh, 22nd, 1799, Kentucky Governor James Garrard, Garrard, I don't want to say his name, placed a $300 reward on each of their heads, which for the time is a lot, a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Um, fleeing northward, the Harps killed two men named Edmonton and Stump. Love it. Which is the most Kentucky name I've ever heard. Stump. Love it. Um, when they were near the mouth of the Saline River in southern Illinois, they came upon three men and camped there and killed them. Oh my god. The pair then made their way to Cave in Rock, a natural cave on the bluffs above the Illinois bank of the Ohio River, and a stronghold of the river pirate and criminal gang leader Samuel Mason. Ugh. A posse had been aggressively... I love this. A posse. What? I, Just a posse. I don't understand why that's the word that's, being used here. Oh, okay. Wikipedia. What a gem. Yeah. A posse had been aggressively pursuing them, but stopped just short of the cave on the opposite shore in Kentucky. Mm. Damn those river pirates. Yeah. With their, th- with their wives and three children in tow, the Harps holed up with the Samuel Mason gang, who preyed on slow-moving flatboats making their way along the Ohio River. I think we're about to find out how you become a river pirate. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I'll take notes. Yeah. While the Mason gang could be ruthless, even... Even they were appalled at the actions of the Harps. After the murderous pair began to make a habit of taking travelers to the top of the bluff, stripping them naked and pushing them off, Samuel Mason forced the Harp brothers to leave. Oh my. Yeah, they've, I think they probably killed more than 50 people. Because just reading this, it seems like literally... I think literally, we're already over 100. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, feel like, I think they might have single-handedly taken out a platoon or two in the wars. Like, it's like... Did you also say they were traveling with their families? Yeah, they, uh, so, fun fact, before, uh, they, they both were married, so, which, is, and there's actually a section called the Harp Women at the end here. Okay. Um, Big, I think, I don't know if he was actually married as much as he was involved with these two sisters, yeah. who each provided him children, kind of thing. Nice. Yeah, really classy. And then, um, Little was married to a woman named Sarah Rice. Okay. So, gives you an idea. Yeah. So, with their wives and three children in tow, they... Oh, just kidding. I just read that. Sorry. We knew this would be hard for you. I'm, I'm sorry. I, it's because I keep going back and forth. It's okay. I had COVID recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, they then returned to eastern Tennessee, where they continued their vicious murder spree. Mm. They killed a farmer named Bradbury, a man named Hardin, and a boy named Coffee in July 1798. Soon more bar- uh, more bodies were discovered, including those of William Ballard, who had been dis- disemboweled Ugh. and thrown into the Holston River. James Brassel, who, his throat, who had his throat viciously slashed and was discovered on Brassel's knob. What? It's location. Is probably. it? Yeah, probably. I, I thought it was like a doorknob. <laughs> <But> like, <laughs> his body was found in a doorknob, bro? I thought maybe like... <laughs> I, don't, I thought maybe like part... I don't... Never mind. I, and John Tully. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I'm smart. John Graves and his teenage son were found dead with their heads axed in southern central Kentucky. In So it, they really change it up. Yeah, they... They I don't think, have, like, a pattern. I feel like they're really opportunistic. It's, like, whatever they mm-hmm. have on them and whoever they just found. And it seems to be mostly men. Like, I... Oh, never mind. I lied. In Logan County, the Harps killed a little girl, a young slave, and enti- an entire fa- family they found asleep in their camp. They're just ruthless. Yeah, I think they just killed whoever they came upon. In August 1799, a few miles northeast of Russellville, Kentucky, Big Harp bashed his infant daughter's head against a tree because of her constant crying annoying him. Oh my god. The only crime for which he would later confess genuine remorse. Damn. Yeah. That same month, a man named Trowbridge was found disemboweled in Highland Creek. When the Harps were given shelter at the uh, Stegel home in Webster County... The pair killed an overnight guest named Major William Love, as well as Mrs. Moses Stegel's four-month-old baby boy whose throat was slit when he cried. Oh my when Mrs. Stegel screamed at the sight of her infant being killed, she was also murdered. <clears throat> so that's kind of, that's all of them. That's that, all the I mean, murders. that's a very long list and very it, ruthless. And, and I would actually be shocked if that was the only, like, I, I That's know all says, we know. Yeah, and I know it says that they may number more than 50, but I would feel pretty strongly it probably does. Yeah. Because they really went for it. Um, so it does actually have a section here about their physical appearances, because it was released by the Kentucky governor as part of the, like... Oh, to find them and everything? Yeah, like, please yeah. help us find these idiots. 
So Big was about six feet high of robust make and is about 30 or 32 years of age. He was ill looking, downcast conti- uh, countenance, mm-hmm. and his hair is black and short, but comes very much down his forehead. <laughs> oh, okay. He is built very straight and is full fleshed in the face. When he went away, he had a, a striped nankeen coat, dark blue woolen stockings, leggings of drab cloth, and trousers of the same coat. And then Little well. is very meager in the face, has short black hair, but not quite so curly as his brother's. He looks older, though really younger, and has likewise a downcast countenance. And he had on a coat and all the other fun stuff, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So, they, um... Do, 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 do. They died. I think they were killed. Yeah, they were killed by a posse who finally tracked them down, it seems. <clears throat> how long how long did their spree last? It really was up until like July 1799 and started in 1797. So not long. I mean, two years. Two years is a long time. It's a long time, yeah. but. I, like, I, I was thinking, like, they're not, like, a decade-long spree. I think that's what Yeah, no, I'm it's not consider. traditional to serial killers who, like, kill, like, a couple times a year. Mm. And people don't realize it at first. And then, like, you find out, like, they've been doing this for, like, three decades. Got it. Okay. Yeah, no, they were... They were... I. It's kind of funny, because, like... Not funny, but, like, it's kind of... um, They're kind of almost, like, mass murderers in that way. Mm. I guess since it's, or like, since it's, or spree killing, I guess. Well, it sounds like they were just moving from location to location and then just killing along their path. Basically, it was like they were running from the law. Constantly running and just killing. And just killing anybody who got in their way. Like a video game, I feel like. Kind of. Just like massive (laughs) carnage. Fair. The original GTA. Yeah. (laughs) Basically. Um, uh, But yeah, so... That's the original. Has their story ever brought about any like movies or books in pop culture? There, I, there isn't in pop culture section. Of course, here. there is. Thank so, you, Wikipedia. Yeah, we love them for that. Mm-hmm. In the nineteen forty one film, The Devil and Daniel Webster, um, Big and Little Harp are part of the jury of the damned that Daniel Webster must convince in order to free an innocent. Um, oh, interesting. Whoever that guy's name is, because I cannot say that. Um, in the 1956 Walt Disney television series, Davy Crockett and the River Pirates. No! The Harp Brothers are portrayed by American actors Paul Newman as Big Harp <gasps> and Frank Richards as Little Harp. No way! Yeah. Big Harp was actually very attractive in that movie. Look at that. <laughs> huh. Um, the 1975 Broadway musical, The Robber Bridegroom, featured two characters, Big Harp and Little Harp, based on the harps. Big Harp is presented as a cut-off head in a... In a, in a trunk, rescued by his brother when he was put to the death for thieving. He's also the smarter of the two brothers. <clears throat> the Hart brothers were the inspiration for Big and Little Drum in Lois McMaster's uh, Bujold's 2008 novel Passage, part of the Sharing Knife series. <clears throat> Wiley Harp is also the subject of a song on Bob Frank and John Murray's 2006 album World Without End. In 2015, the Investigation Discovery Channel series Evil Kin aired an episode about the Hart Brothers called Something Wicked in the Woods. Hmm. And a short narrative of the Hart Brothers' lives appears in Celis uh, Saderstrom's 2015 novel Slab. So, I mean, they've been discussed throughout the past 100, 150 years, but nothing so mainstream as there's been like you know a giant oh, no. movie about them or anything like that no and i i, I kind of understand why because it was funny because like when i was going through this um i kind of forgive me this is gonna sound horrible but i kind of wanted to find one with maybe like a bigger body count mm. only because that was gonna i feel like have more of a as an introduction to serial killers a sp- well, more, of just a more of a splashy like, story yeah we're just more in terms of like because some of them it's like there's so first of all there's so many mm-hmm. um but most of them do have, like, a smaller body count, mainly because it was more of, like, a quick thing. It wasn't, like, like with this one, I saw it, and then I saw that they were, like, the original, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, but, like, I do feel like for something like this, it would be hard to make a movie about it because it's just so gruesome. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you know? that's true. Um, and that's what I feel like a lot of them are like. But this, I mean, they are pretty interesting, to say the least. Um, huh. Well, I never, I never heard about them, so. Yeah. And I, I had never either, so it was so this is kind of America's first serial killers. Interesting. Yeah. 
Um, so those are 18th century serial killers. Mm-hmm. They are, and they are nasty. They're they're gross. Not a fan. Yeah, no, me either. <laughs> so shall I tell you my tale? Yes, I'm ready for yours. Okay, so I stumbled upon this lady. I thought she was fascinating. Um, she's nasty as well. Very nasty. I mean, most of them are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but I wanted to pick a lady serial killer because they're not talked about that often. you didn't want to go often? with Eileen Warnos? I don't know who that is. You don't know who Eileen Warnos is? No. Okay, first of all, there is a movie called, I think it's just called Monster. Oh, wait, that's the one with Charlize Theron? Yes. Okay. Well, who no. did great in that? I want to, I meant, like, I want to do, so as you know, I love old things. So <laughs> <laughs> You want to do an old lady serial killer? I wanted to killer. do an old lady serial killer. So, like, I wanted to do something, like, one of, um... Pre-19th century. Yeah. Which is fair because I feel like when we talk about serial killers, most people want to talk about the United States and they want to talk about, um, like, the 70s and the 80s, which is when you get, like, Night Stalker, BTK, and, like, is BTK that time? It it doesn't matter. But that's why I was, like, I wanted to find something a lot older than that because I feel like people don't really talk about that. Kind of Jack the Ripper-esque. Yeah, but not Jack the Ripper because I think he deserves his own episode. Oh, I agree. Um, But... I found this woman, and I thought she had some interesting little bits in her story, and probably no one has really talked about her that much, so I thought we'd give it a go. Um, I will be butchering this name quite a lot, as we know from previous episodes, <laughs> my pronunciation for a lot of things is really garbage. Your choice of words tonight is so on point. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so this is the story of La Quintrala. La Quintrala. La Quintrala. La Quintrala. Or La Quintrala. <laughs> all I can think of is La Quinta Hotel. <laughs> That's all I can La think of. Qu- okay. It, I mean, never mind. Forgive me. It's terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. But her full name, which I apologize, is Catalina de la Rios y Lisbergier. Which the nickname. <laughs> we will not be calling her. <laughs> we will be calling her Cat. La Quintrala. Okay. La Quintrala. Um. So her years of life were between 16, 1604 and sixteen sixty five. So I really picked that's somebody seventeenth century. Yeah, and not only that, that's a long time for that. She did live that? a very long life. Yeah. Like yes. How how many years is that? Like sixty five. Sixty one years. Sixty one. And that was, especially mm-hmm. for this time period, that's actually kind of part of this mythos that they say okay. like she lived so long, which <laughs> for seventeenth century <laughs> she lived. So, so long. long. <laughs> um, wow, that's so crazy. It's so crazy. No, the, the, what a way with the words they had back then. The people who contributed to this Wikipedia article use the word mythos like five times. Oh, do they? It's not like posse, right? No, it's not. You got the posse. posse. The posse chased her. I got mythos a lot, and it, it's not the best worded article. Um, yeah, no. But we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, I did find some other little informations about her from other places as well. Okay. Um. Anyway, her name, they call her La Quintrala because of her flaming red hair and that it was related to... Um, what does that mean then, La Quintrala? Good question. Oh, is so that coming up? I'm sorry. It is um, related to two different things. Okay. Um, there is a flower. It's the Pantagodian red flowered mistletoe. So oh, okay. relating her to that. Yeah. Or it's a woman of a lusty and sacrilegious nature. Work, girl. Yeah. <laughs> So that's where you're getting the name La Quintrala, but the mm-hmm. red flowered mistletoe being tied to her red fiery hair. Yeah. Um, so she was an aristocratic 17th century Chilean landowner and murderer of the colonial era. Oh, wow. Era. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Error. Ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish everybody could have seen the face you made when you said that. I was just like, that. that's wrong. Yeah, you were like, oh. <laughs> Um, she is famous for her beauty and, according to legend, her cruel treatment of her servants. Oh. Her persona is strongly mythified. There you go, that word myth in yeah, there. The mythos. Of yeah. That. And survives in Chilean culture as the epitome of the wicked and abusive woman. Oh. So still to this day, people know of La Quintrala. I'm okay. We'll talk about her. Um, which, we're not from that culture, so we... I had never heard of her. I'd never heard of her. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about her. There's a lot of... Not fun information here, so I'm going to skim about that a little bit. Okay. Um, her death count ranges between, at minimum, 40 wow. through the hundreds. Okay. Yeah. Um, because 
she killed serfs and slaves a lot. They didn't really So they're them. undocumented. Yeah. And there was a big <clears throat> issue of her legal trial and how they were actually still doing, a, trying to try her after her death. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. To try to basically kind of like really acknowledge account. that these people yeah. were killed by her. Which is very common for those people who kind of stick away from serial killers. That is very, very common for mm-hmm. serial killers. Well, I mean, you want to give... You want to help the victims and to well, kind of but tell not, their stories. Not only that, so something that's very famous with serial killers is that almost all the time, they'll confess to, like, maybe, like, a few of them. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they'll find, like, the police or whoever will find, like, something that kind of fits, like, their... Um, their pattern or, yeah. or whatever it is and um and then they'll be like oh yeah i did that one too or they'll take credit for ones that aren't theirs or they'll promise like in order to kind of like stay their execution mm-hmm. they'll like really slowly more so just for people out there who really don't know that i don't know there's not probably that many people but for those yeah. of you who are <laughs> um so la quintrella was a child um with eight children in her family so she was one of eight? She was one of eight. That's interesting. So uh, that was the guy I'm going to talk about. Oh. Um, her and her sister were the only girls. And the sisters were then accused of poisoning Governor Alonzo de Rivera in 1604 out of spite. Um, mm-hmm. But then she also had some brothers as well. Um, but she grew up in a family, as I mentioned, of rich landowners. Um, so both sides of her family were very wealthy. And um, renowned families in the 17th century. High Society of Santiago. So... Even though she was really well-bred, she had not a very good education and was semi-illiterate until her death. Oh, okay. So she was mainly cared for by her father and grandmother. Um, and then her husband, and then ended up she took a lot of land ownership later on in her life. Um, as I mentioned, her name, La Quintrella, is derived from the indigenous parasitic plant whose red flowers exactly match the color of her hair. So that's where you got that name from. Oh. Um, she was considered a gorgeous beauty, white complexion, a tall stature, red hair, and intense green eyes. She was a mix of Amerindian, Spanish, and German blood, which had given her remarkable physical attributes, quote-unquote, that made her very attractive to men. And that's according (laughs) to the chronicles of Bishop Francisco Gonzalez de Saladiso. Yeah. So, beautiful woman, and easily could get, then, the attention of a lot of men. Okay. Wouldn't it be funny in real life she was just an uggo? She's super ugly. And just all these chronicles are just like, <laughs> what a lady. Um, da, da, da. So it's, it is said that one of her aunts, along with her grandmother, um, had approached the young woman with the pagan practices of witchcraft. Oh, my God. I know. I know. Uh, but that actually does not come up Who in her story the at all. Who um, Warrens? Oh, I know. <laughs> it's the demons. It's the demons. <laughs> But the witchcraft actually does not have any interweaving throughout her murdering. They just, that's oh, really? like one little paragraph. They're like, they of taught course. her the pagan practices of witchcraft. Of course it was the pagan. Next we'll find out she was also an owl. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, one of her first accusations against her was that she murdered her own father. Good for her. She poisoned him <laughs> with the dinner she had prepared for him. Apparently Chicken. Apparently. That's how he wrote it. <laughs> That's what she called it too. She was like, "Father, I've made you apparently, apparently chicken." chicken. <laughs> it's like, "Oh, daughter, thank, thank you, thank you for this apparent chicken." He's like, mm, mm, "This is delicious this is chicken." <laughs> I think I'm only gonna have one bite. I had a I had a very large lunch because <laughs> this is apparently not chicken. <laughs> it's so funny because the chicken thing comes up in like this and then another source as well. They're just like, "He was poisoned by the chicken," <laughs> um, by the apparent chicken. The chrono- the guy who wrote kind of like this whole story of La Quintrala, his name is Benjamin Avico McKenna, and he wrote the apparently chicken thing. And <laughs> I love that. Imagine like actually apparently chicken. <laughs> I want to create, I think somebody should create like a um, I would processed like, food chicken thing and just call it apparently chicken. I was thinking a band name called the apparent chicken. I, I mean, that is fitting for a band. Anything. I love just apparent chicken. I love this phrase. This is apparently chicken. This is apparently chicken. Um, so this must have happened when her father was ill in bed in 1622, when she was about 18 years old. So that's when she most likely poisoned her father with the apparent chicken. We're having a lot of... Oh, a um, little 
apparent chickens. Well, I mean, this is a little, this is a little different. The next one, he doesn't poison anybody that way, but um, very. Uh, it's it's actually this is a great lead. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so her aunt reported the crime to the authorities. So the aunt that may have taught her that pagan witchcraft <laughs> regretted it. Regretted it, and then <laughs> told- like, how dare you use the apparent chicken on somebody? <laughs> that was our secret. <laughs> that was our secret pagan chicken. <laughs> um. So even though the aunt reported it, um, she was never prosecuted because of the lack of evidence or she's because... she's just so damn beautiful. So <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> they were like, we're going to arrest you. And then there was just like... Those heaving bosoms. It was like, it's like in Wreck-It Ralph with the taffy coming down like, la la la, la la la, la 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 la. <laughs> that, so, that was her witchcraft, was her beauty. The beauty. Um, so, and her family's influence was so prominent was in the really town. Was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that um they just they were like eh, it's yeah. fine um da, da, da. so then her grandmother became kind of the guardian of the sisters even though she was 18 they still were not married therefore yeah. they needed to have some people taking care of them um and that the grandmother said oh well you know i gotta get you married that's important <laughs> um i don't want to keep doing this. i don't want to <laughs> so, and you're definitely not making any chicken for dinner no <laughs> so she then had a dowry for her, which was okay. forty five thousand three hundred and forty nine pesos, That's which a was lot. a considerable sum at the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a considerable sum. Ne- well, maybe not, I guess, in pesos, but it was a, it was a ton of money for this dowry. Yeah. Um, in September sixteen twenty six, at the age of twenty two, so this is four years after the apparent chicken incident. <laughs> the apparent chicken incident. <laughs> um, she <laughs> entered into marriage of convenience with the Spanish colonial, sorry, colonel. I'm just having a night. You're having the same night I am. Yeah. I'm thinking about the chicken. (laughs) I know. It's hard to forget. Um, So he was 42 years old. So she was 22. So he was 22, 20 years older than her. And I'm just doing doing math. It was quick in my head. That was really fast. Um, And she was, no, not interested. She did not want to get married. Um, Okay. It was a marriage of convenience, as I said. So the grandmother wanted her to get married, hence the large dowry. And, trying to pair her off yeah uh the this priest is gonna have a chicken incident isn't he <laughs> no not really oh. um the priest who married them though was pedro de figuerio and the legend says that she never forgave him <laughs> and tried to assassinate him although according to another version she fell in love with him and harassed him to the point of exhaustion <laughs> But to no avail. I love that it's either she wanted him dead or she just... She just went after him so hard. Yeah. <laughs> either way, she was obsessed with this man. She loved that priest. Um, so yeah, there was that. Um, then she had a son um, with her husband, not the priest. And <laughs> his it would have been way more scandalous if it was Oh, the would have. Um, but he died when he was between 8 or 10 years old. They're not Aww, uh, sure what the source sad. says. Yeah. Um, and she had extremely ruthless ways, and this kind of picks up then when she's, you know, past the priest phase, and when okay. she's getting more into having more property. Um, she said that she was still kind and loving towards her husband, besides not, like, being in love with him. Okay. But she was, she treated him fairly well, okay. what they're saying. Um, but then she had a lot of lovers as well. Oh. This is while he's still alive. But, you know, I mean, it's fine. It was a marriage of convenience. A marriage of convenience. In 1624, uh, she invited with a love letter to a rich man from Santiago to her house. When she had him in her arms, she killed him with knives and blamed the crime on a slave who was then executed. Yeah. However, some facts from this version of the tale are doubtful because according to what is written in her will, she did not know how to write. (laughs) <laughs> Wait, so what was written in her will was she didn't know how to write there was once again I said, this whole document of wikipedia someone just cannot write the story basically i think what they're saying is yeah how did she write a love letter to a lover exactly she can't write yeah she needed some hooked on phonics she didn't have it yeah no so but she killed that guy <laughs> it is also said that she beat and stabbed a former lover, Enrique, um, on the grounds that he had played with her feelings since he had refused to give her a cross, which is a symbol of his nobility, in exchange for a kiss. Hmm. So she got pissed off and killed him. Okay, hey, good for her. Yeah. You know what? You do you, girl. 
Um, he even dared to brag about his love affairs to the friar um, about their platonic love and publicly boasted about taking advantage of a loose woman referring to her. Oh, it is. You know, it sounds like he kind of just had it coming. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to count this one for La (laughs) Quintrala. It is also said that she severed the left ear of Martin de Insal. There we go. (laughs) Martin. (laughs) Martin. (laughs) Martin's ear. (laughs) And that she killed a knight of Santiago in front of another gentleman after a romantic date. Okay. So, if you want to date her, she's beautiful. But she may or may not kill you. It sounds like she's just going to fucking kill you. And the apparent chicken may be part of it. Yeah, she's going to make you a chicken dinner. So that's kind of the love affairs. Um, There was something else before I get to the land ownership that there was about... Hang on, I got to find... I got to read this right because it is good. Um, (laughs) Excuse me while I just hunt through this document. (laughs) Um, Okay. We're so official. So official. Okay, um... They tie her story now to Catholic tradition a lot because there was a lot of her wanting to make sure that she, you know, gave money to the church. The annual masses will be said in her name following her death. Okay. Um, but there's my favorite story of her with Catholicism with the crucifix. Um, but because her, her relationship with the crucifix was just as tempestuous as with the other men of her life. <laughs> what? It is said that once she became so furious... Because the crucified Jesus appeared to be staring accusingly at her provocative cleavage. (laughs) She ordered the removal of the image, claiming that no man in her house had the right to give her funny looks. Okay. I don't know if... I I know I'm supposed to hate her. But you kind of love her. I kind of live for her. (laughs) (laughs) So that's... That's the bits I think you would like of her. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, she, there's a lot of, then, I'm sure. So that's all kind of the love killing, the the priesty bits, the crucifix bits. I mean, the one, what was his name? Martin? What was the other one? The one, Enrique? Yeah, Martin, Enrique, and then... I think um, it was Enrique. Enrique was the one who called her loose, right? Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, no. Enrique had it coming. That's yeah, my yeah. my opinion on Enrique. And she killed a knight. Um, but then, so she... Inherited quite a lot of land from her father as well as she inherited a lot of land from her husband after he passed and her sister died as well and she got that land as well. She oh, was an shit. extremely wealthy woman. Yeah. Which then obviously <laughs> made her then um, ex- hard to then take down because gotcha, she had so much so much influence. Influence, that's the word, yes. So um she said they loved, she loved living on the farms. Um, she loved riding her horses through the valleys. She hated the city. Um, so How big was the city? It was a big city. Big city. <laughs> I'll have to go there. Yeah, you should go there. Book. I think you like it. It's nice and big. Bring my crayon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then she gets into the, the real intense cruelty of her treatment of the slaves and the serfs. Which is sad. Which is very bad. And that's when... She was known and still is known for her e- extreme, awful treatment of people. Yeah. And that she would be just, you know, kill them, have them beaten, really, really. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to go into all that. But that's when then there was the interventions of justice because the okay. body count racked up so high. Oh, my God. That then they had enough to be like, hey, <laughs> this is not just a few people anymore. Yeah, like. You gotta calm it down. Yeah. So, in 1660, the royal audience, in light of the number and magnitude of the complaints against La Quintrala, began a secret official investigation based on the accusations of the bishop Francisco Luis de Salcida, a relative of Luis Vasquez. Um, So then, they got the justice involved, and then her nephew was also kind of involved with her, of, like, doing some really Mm -hmm. awful killings. And, um, but they got, they moved her and her nephew away from their big property and then interviewed people. So they actually did an official investigation. This is like oh, over wow. the 17th century. Yeah. And then they discovered that, yeah, no, she's awful. Yeah, she's like, batshit she's, crazy. She's batshit yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so against her, you know, they had the accused chicken patricide and the murder of all those guys. <laughs> um, a trial was begun for the slow and cruel slaughter of her servants. She was charged with about 40 murders and contributing to her mythical status. 
<laughs> the mythos. The mythos. Um, the much publicized trial was carried out very slowly due to the influence of her name, her relatives, and her extraordinary wealth. Okay. So that's why this this dragged on for a long time. So they, and she fought it every step of the way. Absolutely. So three decades later. Oh my God. Justice insisted on figuring out the veracity of the accusations, but La Quintrella had already passed away nine years previously. Oh my God. So even nine years post mortem, they were still doing investigations. I hate that because it just means she got to live out her days, basically. Oh yeah, just being uh, like a rich bitch. Yeah. Um. She died on January 15th, 1665, at the age of 61, an advanced age for the time, feared and myth, <laughs> myth, once again, myth, myth. the myth. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that, her being that old for this time period made her mm-hmm. even more of a kind of frightening figure. Well, it was the pagan witchcraft. It was yes. pagan witchcraft, right? Yeah. She had that chicken power. Yeah, that chicken um, <laughs> power. Her funeral was lavish and she was buried, as was tradition, in her family kind of area of mm-hmm. the, and, um... Then she gave the church quite a lot of money to then constantly say masses for her following her passing, which is very traditional for the period. Yeah. Um, but it's just kind of another slap in the face of the victims uh, that yeah. she's being venerated, or not venerated, but she's being... Celebrated, really. And, right? you know, promoted to not be in purgatory or hell, because that's what the masses are for, for after your death. Yeah. And she killed all these people. Literally hundreds. Hundreds of people. Um, her figure still lives in Chilean popular culture as the epitome of the perverse and abusive woman, as well as the oppression of Spanish rule. Hmm. Um, and there are some pop cultures, like kind of stories of her. A Danish composer um, Lars Grigard composed an opera based on her, um, where five singers and interactive computer was prom- yeah, five singers and an interactive computer it was in for two th- September second, two thousand four in Copenhagen. But not really that much else. And I'm she's a fascinating figure. Yeah. So I would um I would love She's one they could make a movie about. I would I love think. a movie about yeah. La Quintrala. So yeah, that's my story of her. I have never heard of her before. I have not either. The she's chicken prolific. thing is great. Yeah, prolific. The, the apparent chicken. The apparent chicken. <laughs> I love that phrase of words. <laughs> By apparently chicken. By chicken. <laughs> So you said you had um, a comparable tale? I do, and it's so weird, like, the way you started it with everything. Like, he is, I believe, one of eight, right? Let me see here. And then the whole 18 thing you said? Something. He's the oldest of eight children. That would, uh, um, uh, what His mother dies when he's 18. Mm. Yeah, so his his father actually Oh, who died. is, what's the name? Sorry. So his name is Charles Cullen. 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 Like, kind of like Edward Cullen from Twilight. Oh, he's a vampire. No. <laughs> So, and the reason why I wanted to talk about him is because not only was he born in 1960 in West Orange, when New you Jersey. Were. What? I'm sorry? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Let's go back. Just, let's just take it back because I'm about to become a killer. Like, what year do you think I was born? 30 years ahead of me? <laughs> Mm-hmm. This man is 61 years old. He is still alive. Oh, really? Yes. And he, um, so to give you, I'm just going to read the first line here. So he is an American serial killer who confessed to murdering up to 40 patients during the course of his 16 year career as a nurse in New Jersey. Oh my God. Yes. He, however, he was, he's been, con- he has 29 confirmed kills, <gasps> but he is ultimately responsible after through like subsequent interviews with police psychiatrists and journalists, they believe that he could be responsible for up to 400 deaths, (gasps) which would make him the most prolific serial killer in recorded history. Oh my God. And he's right from our neck of the woods. (laughs) That's terrifying. It is terrifying because um, you'll be, it'll be, okay, so he operated, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a lot of words, oh, yeah. big, I'm like a caveman. Big city, uh, little city. Big city, little city. <laughs> um, so his span of crime starts in 1988, which is two years before we were born, mm-hmm. and ends in 2003. And he was working where? What town? Oh, I'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... To give a little bit about his early life. I'm like, am I a ghost? <laughs> am I dead? <laughs> no, but I will say this. of um, He's not like you, like when like when you think serial killer, like stabbing people. He's not like that. No, I'm assuming it's something medical. You're correct. Because he was a nurse. Yeah. But um, so he was born in West Orange, which is not far from us. No. Not very far at all. And um, his father died when he was seven months old. And then his mother died in a car crash when he was 18. And he 
described his own childhood as miserable. Like his sister's boyfriend and the and the kids at school, they all bullied him mercilessly. He actually tried to kill himself at nine oh. years old. Yeah, with um the chemicals from a chemistry set. Oh my so, god. Yeah, when his mom died, he dropped out of high school. And um, immediately enlisted in the Navy. Okay. Where he passed all of his psychological examinations, despite having tried to kill himself previously. And, um, oh, and also, there was something, actually, oh, before I move on to that, there is something important about his mother. When she died, the hospital refused to release um, her body and cremated it instead. And also um, didn't why? tell him immediately that she was dead. I don't what? know why. I don't know why they did that. It was What bizarre. hospital? I, it doesn't say, but, <laughs> um, which I think is interesting. I'm sure you could probably find it in a little bit of research, but, um, because it was 1977. It wasn't like okay. it was that yeah, long yeah. ago. Um, so, but he joins the Navy where he then serves on the submarine USS Woodrow Wilson, <laughs> where he would have to be, he would be expected to be stuck in a cramped vessel for two months at a time submerged. <laughs> No. Which he's already clearly psychologically a little bit. Yeah, um, that's uh, not yeah. the best idea. Yeah, so he actually does pretty well for himself while he's there. He rises to the rank of petty officer second class. Good for him. And gets assigned to a team that operates the ship's Poseidon missiles. What is that like? I don't know. Imagine little tridents just coming yeah. out of things. <laughs> well, I think it's just that they're... I mean, I think it is that it's the three of them, maybe. Like, when they shoot, it's like the three... That's not like, what I'm thinking. Uh, I, no, I know it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, again, is hazed and bullied a lot oh. during this time period. And he actually, um, they find him at one point just sitting near um, the missile controls wearing a surgical mask, gloves, and scrubs rather than his uniform. And he's disciplined. They never find out why he did that. Eventually, they um, reassign him to a lower pressure job on the supply ship USS Canopus. Um, but he did attempt suicide and was committed to the Navy psych- psychiatric ward several times over the subsequent, next subsequent few years, whatever. Okay. So eventually, he gets medically discharged from <laughs> the Navy for undisclosed reasons. Yeah. And enrolls in the Mountainside Hospital School of Nursing in Montclair, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, I know why you panicked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is not a school for nursing in yeah. Mountainside, okay. New Jersey. <laughs> He is elected president during his nursing... Of the Americas? No, yes, <laughs> of the Americas. Of, of his nursing class. Graduates in 1986 and starts work in the burn unit of St. Barnabas Medical Center in Livingston, New Jersey. <laughs> oh! Which is, like, not far from us. <laughs> I don't think I've been there, though. I haven't either, but, I mean, obviously I've heard of St. Barnabas. Yeah. Okay. So you said burn unit? The burn unit, okay. yeah. During this time, he also meets and marries his wife, Adrian Baum. They have a daughter, Shauna, born later that year. And then this part made me kind of laugh. <laughs> Only because Colin's wife became increasingly disturbed at his unusual behavior and abuse of the family dogs. Why did you stay with him? Yeah. yeah but anyway. So, yeah. so now for the murders, I'm just going to read again. This is insane. Okay. I've read this before. It's crazy. So... <clears throat> The first murders to which Cohen later confessed occurred at St. Barnabas on June 11th, 1988, two years before us. Mm. Um, Cohen administered a lethal overdose of intravenous medication to a patient. He eventually admitted killing several other patients at St. Barnabas, including an AIDS patient who died after being given an overdose of insulin. He left St. Barnabas in January 1992 when hospital authorities began investigating who had contaminated IV bags. Oh, my God. Yeah, that investigation determined that Cohen had most likely been responsible, resulting in dozens of patient deaths at the hospital. He was there two years. Holy shit. Yeah. One month after leaving St. Barnabas, Cohen took a job at the Warren County Hospital in Phillipsburg. Well, the Warren Hospital in Phillipsburg, but it's in Warren County, New okay. Jersey. yeah, yeah. Um, you've heard of Phillipsburg, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> where he murdered three elderly women with overdoses of the heart medication digoxin. Okay, how did he get another job? Oh, well, they talk about that later. Okay. And we will too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but his murders are like... So, his final victim said that a sneaky male nurse had injected her as she slept, but family members and healthcare providers at the hospital dismissed her comments as unfounded. Of course. If, right. The following year, Cullen moved into a basement apartment in Phillipsburg following a contentious divorce from his wife. Mm. He shared custody of his daughters. 
And Cohen would later claim that he had wanted to quit nursing in 1993, but the court ordered child support payments forced him to continue working. Naturally, right? Uh. So in March 1993, Cohen broke into a co-worker's home while she and her young son slept, but without waking them. He then began stalking the woman who filed a police report against him. Cohen subsequently pleaded guilty to trespassing and received one year of probation. The day after his arrest, Cohen attempted suicide again. He took two months off work and was treated for depression in two psychiatric facilities, but attempted suicide twice more... That's a really weirdly worded sentence. But attempted suicide two more times before the end of 1993. Okay. That September, a 91-year-old cancer patient reported that Cohen, who was not her assigned nurse, had come into her room and injected her with a needle. She <gasps> died the next day. Yeah. Her son protested that her death was not natural, and Warren Hospital administered lie detector tests to Cohen and several other nurses, which Cohen passed. Cohen continued to work at Warren until the following spring. Ew. Could you imagine? Okay, <clears throat> this is actually creeping me out. Okay, okay, and I know the story of Big and Little. Mm-hmm. Gross. Disgusting. Yeah, of course. But also, so long ago. But yeah. I'm also like massive anxiety when it comes to medical stuff oh okay i so, knew this was gonna hit you in a certain and, way and now i'm like well i will never trust anybody ever again right right <laughs> well, <laughs> so he then begins a three-year stint in the intensive care cardiac care unit of hunterton medical center in flemington which again it's getting not, closer again, <laughs> we're just getting closer to home he claimed that he did not harm anyone during the first two years but hospital records for that time period have been destroyed uh, had been destroyed by the time he was arrested in 2003. Cohen admitted murdering five patients between January and September 1996, again with overdoses of digoxin. He then found work at Morristown Memorial Hospital. <laughs> I knew you were going to freak out. But was soon fired for poor performance. For any of you out there listening, Morristown <sighs> Memorial Hospital is like, like I've been there. <laughs> yeah, no, I was there Yeah, like a year ago. Yeah, like, and it's actually, it's a prolific hospital. It's very well known. Um, for good stuff. Yeah, yes, yeah. For, I mean, they have an amazing cancer treatment yes. center there. So, um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, but still, like, <laughs> he was there. <laughs> he was there. And, and and when was that? Like, in 1997, I guess, around then? I don't, I don't think I was there then. No. <laughs> but, like, but, I mean, to be fair, in 1997, hold on, let me do some quick math. My grandmother is 91. 97 is how many years ago? 3, 10, 13, 23, 24. So that would be... What's 91 minus 24? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) 71 minus 4 would be like 60... God, was that 67? My grandmother actually might have been... Because my grandmother had cancer. She had breast oh, cancer in her 60s. I didn't know and that. And she went to Morristown. Mm. Yeah, so but, she... Well, had... he wasn't working in the cancer ward, though. No, he was working in the intensive care... Oh, no, no, that was... I don't know where he was working in Morristown. He was He was soon fired for, for, for poor performance. I'll give... I'll give Morristown this. They got... He was in and out, so... But, yeah, he could have theoretically... Like, that's that's how close to home this one oh. is. Yeah. So I don't like that. He remained unemployed for six months and stopped making child support payments. After seeking treatment for depression in the Warren Hospital emergency room, Cohen was admitted to a psychiatric facility for a short time. I will say, not defending him at all, Mm -hmm. but his life is filled with like these psychiatric moments that somebody somewhere should have been like, maybe he should not be a nurse and should be committed. Once again, not defending him, but the system certainly failed him. And everybody else involved. In February 1998, Cullen was hired by the Liberty Nursing and Rehabilitation Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania. So we're moving a little farther away. Yeah. um, Where he staffed a ward of respirator dependent patients. No, bad idea. Right? Don't give this guy that power. Uh, exactly. Um, there, Cullen was accused of giving patients drugs at unscheduled times. He was fired after being seen entering a patient's room with syringes in hand, an encounter that left the patient with a broken arm but without criminal injections. Which. H- how does I, this keep happening? I know, right? Um, but again, we do talk about it. Okay. Um, Cullen caused a patient's death at Liberty Hospital, which was blamed on another nurse. And after leaving Liberty, Cohen was employed at Easton Hospital in Easton, Pennsylvania, which is right on the border of 
uh, New, uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Okay. It's like right near Phillipsburg and all that area. So, um, and he was there from November 1998 to March 1999. On December 30th, 1998, he murdered yet another patient with digoxin. A coroner's blood test showed lethal amounts of digoxin in the patient's blood, but an internal investigation within Easton Hospital was inconclusive. Evidence did not definitively point to Colin as the murderer. Mm. Even though we later find out that that drug is obviously yeah, like one what, of his favorites. Um, <clears throat> even with his history of mental instability and the number of deaths during his employment at various hospitals, Colin continued to find work due to a national shortage of nurses. Uh... Additionally, no reporting mechanism existed at the time to identify nurses with mental health or employment problems. Concerned about liability, hospitals were unwilling to take significant action against Colin. Yeah, so, and we actually, there's even more that they talk about later. In March 1999, Cullen took a job at the burn unit of Allentown's Lehigh Valley Hospital, um, where he murdered one patient and attempted to murder another. One month later, he voluntarily resigned from Lehigh Valley Hospital and took a job working in the cardiac care unit at St. Luke's Hospital in Bethlehem. During the subsequent three years, Cullen murdered at least five patients and is known to have attempted to kill two more. On January 11th, 2000, he once again attempted suicide by lighting a charcoal grill in his bathtub, hoping to succumb to carbon monoxide poisoning. Colin's neighbors smelled the smoke and called the fire department and police. He was taken to a hospital in a psychiatric facility, but returned home the following day. So, like, it's just... Continues... This is just... Yeah. It's a crazy. shit storm. Yeah. No one suspected Colin was murdering patients at St. Luke's until a co-worker found vials of medication in a disposable bin. A disposal bin, not a disposable bin. You got it. You got <laughs> I, I got back to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, the drugs were not valuable outside of the hospital and were not used by recreational drug users, so their theft was curious. Hmm. An investigation showed that Cullen had taken the medication. He was offered a deal by the medical facility, resign and be given a neutral recommendation, or be fired. Oh my god. Right? A, a neutral recommendation. Yeah, like... <laughs> I know. This is the, the chicken, the apparent yeah, chicken. Yeah, this is the apparent chicken, literally. He resigned and was escorted from the building in June 2002, which it, the the time frame of this is so crazy to me. Yeah. Because it's just like, I remember being a kid and I would never have thought that even then, like as a kid, mm. I would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Seven of his co-workers at St. Luke's later alerted the Lehigh County District Attorney about their suspicions that Cullen had used drugs to kill patients. Investigators never lurk- looked into Cullen's past and the case was dropped nine months later due to lack of evidence. Ugh. Right? <clears throat> this one is the, this is the part that really actually scares me. <laughs> so, in September 2002, Cullen began working in the critical care unit of the Somerset Medical Center in Somerville, New Jersey. Why? Yeah. He began dating a local woman around this time, but his depression worsened. Cullen killed at least 13 patients Mm. and attempted to kill at least one more by mid-2003 using digoxin, insulin, and epinephrine. That is terrifying. Yeah. On June 18th, 2003, Cullen Cullen unsuccessfully attempted to murder Somerset patient Philip Greger, who was later discharged and who died six months later of natural causes. Good for Philip. Um, what makes me, what makes me even, and this is such a, like, non, but like, my mom was in this hospital oh. in 2006. Okay. So, like, not even any time yeah, close to it. But that really, because, like, I don't know, especially because he was working in the critical care unit, which is where she was. Like, that just, like, it was like, Whoa. it just, it really yeah. touched base with me. Mm-hmm. Not, like, for the same reason of other people, realistically, but, you know. Uh, <clears throat> soon afterward... Somerset began to notice Colin's wrongdoing. The hospital's computer system showed that Colin was accessing the records of patients to whom he was not assigned. Coworkers began seeing Colin in the rooms of patients to whom he was not assigned as well. That's just, again, really weirdly worded in mm. Wikipedia. The hospital's computerized drug dispensing cabinets showed that Colin was requesting medications that his patients had not been prescribed. And Colin's drug requests were strange and included many orders that were immediately canceled and many repetitive requests within minutes of each other. In July 2003, the executive director of the New Jersey Poison Information and Education System warned Somerset officials that at least four suspicious overdoses indicated the possibility that an employee was killing patients. The hospital delayed contacting authorities until October, and then by then, Cullen had killed at least another five patients and attempted to kill a sixth. Yeah. Wow. 
So when a patient in Somerset died of low blood sugar in October of 2003, the hospital alerted the New Jersey State Police. That patient was Cullen's final victim. State officials, um, castigated? That's a interesting, what, what does that mean? I've never seen that word in my life. Cast, castigated the hospital for, fa- I feel like that's supposed to be a different word. <laughs> they, um, criticized the hospital for failing to report um, a non-fatal, insid- uh, non-fatal insulin overdose administered by Cullen in August. <clears throat> An investigation into his employment history revealed past suspicions about his involvement in patient deaths, and Somerset fired Cullen on October 31st, 2003. Halloween. Yeah, right? Ostensibly for lying on his job application. Oh my god. Right? That's why he got fired. Yeah, technically, yes. <laughs> Not because he killed people, but because he lied on his job application. Fellow nurse Amy Logren alerted the police after becoming alert- alarmed about Cohen's records of accessing drugs and links to patients' deaths. And again, uh, one of the big things I've seen in this is that the nurses around him seemed to, like, sniff him out immediately and just continued to get kind of, like, ignored by um, oh. authority. Police kept him under surveillance for several weeks until they had finished their investigation. And investigators assigned um, Amy, Amy Lauren, to visit Cohen after work hours and talk with him while wearing a wire. Oh. From this, they were able to produce enough evidence for probable cause of arrest. <gasps> he was arrested at a restaurant on December 12th, 2003, uh, 2003 almost said 2013, <laughs> Jesus. Charged with one count of murder and one count of attempted murder. That's it. Yeah, but I think they're just going based yeah, yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On December 14th, he admitted to homicide detectives Dan Baldwin and Tim Braun that he had murdered Florian Gall and attempted to murder, um, oh, I'm going to... Another person. Yes, another person whose name, uh, Jin, we're just going to say Jin Han, because her, their middle name, I I don't know how to say it. Both patients at Somerset. In addition, Cohen told the detectives that he had murdered as many as 40 patients Mm. over his 16-year career. And in April 2004, Cohen pleaded guilty in a New Jersey court to killing 13 patients and attempting to kill two others by lethal injection while employed at Somerset. As part of his plea agreement, Cohen promised to cooperate with authorities if they did not seek the death penalty for his crimes, which I think is ironic. Um, a, A month later, he pleaded guilty to the murder of three more patients in New Jersey. And in November 2004, Cohen pleaded guilty in an Allentown court to killing six patients and trying to kill three others. He repeatedly interrupted the proceedings by taunting the judge with the chant, Your Honor, you need to step down. Oh my God. <laughs> right? Like, like all of this guy. And Cohen was ordered to be restrained and gagged. <laughs> oh my Which is a very God. Pennsylvania court thing oh, to yeah. do. Um, on March 2nd, 2006, Cullen was sentenced to 11 consecutive life sentences in New Jersey and is not eligible for parole until the year 2403. <laughs> <laughs> so I think... I think he's going to die. Yeah, I think he's going to die there. Prison. Currently, he is held at the New Jersey State Prison in Trenton. Okay. Which, and he's still there. And on March 10th, 2006, Cullen was brought into the courtroom of Lehigh County President Judge William H. Platt for a sentencing hearing. He, Cullen, upset with the judge, kept repeating, Your Honor, you need to step down for 30 minutes until Platt had Cullen gagged with cloth and duct tape. Oh my god. Yeah. Even after being gagged, Cullen continued to try to repeat the fa- uh, phrase. In this hearing, Platt gave him an additional six life sentences. <laughs> As part of his plea um, agreement, Cullen had been working with law enforcement officials to identify additional victims. Huh. Yeah. Um, As for his motive, he stated that he administered overdoses to patients in order to spare them from being coded or going into cardiac or respiratory arrest and being listed as code blue emergency. He, so he thought this was... He was sparing them of suffering, essentially. Okay. Yeah. He told detectives he could not bear witness to or hear about attempts at saving a victim's life. So he also stated that he gave patients overdoses so that he could end their suffering and prevent hospital personnel from dehumanizing them. So he was trying to be nurse death. Essentially. And I think, I think a big part of it probably comes from the fact that when his mom died, Mm. the hospital like didn't return her body, cremated her and didn't like tell him like essentially kind of treated her like an object versus Mm -hmm. a person. So, however, because this is a crazy person, not all of his victims were terminal patients. 
Some, yeah. like Gall, had been expected to recover before Co- uh, Cullen killed them. Nurse Lynn Tester described many of his vi- of the victims as people on the mend in a police interview. Oof. Yeah, so most of his victims were actually people who would have been just fine had they never encountered him. Instead of using common painkillers and stimulants, access of which was strictly regulated by hospitals due to their value as street ju- uh, drugs, Cullen chose instead to use um, as his tools of choice drugs such as digoxin and insulin, mm-hmm. which had little outside use of, um, had li- I'm sorry, had little use outside of a hospital setting and were less likely to attract attention. So he thought about oh, it. Oh, no, this is all planned. Yeah, it's not like... And he had to figure out which victims he wanted to go to. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... No, no, no. Yeah. And investigators stated that Cullen may have caused patients to suffer, but that he appears not to realize this, contradicting his claims of wanting to save patients. Mm. Similarly, Cullen told investigators that although he often observed patients suffering for several days, the decision to commit each murder was performed on impulse. He told detectives in December 2003 that he lived most of his life in a fog and that he had blacked out memories of murdering most of his victims. He said he could not recall how many he killed or why he had chosen them. In some cases, Cullen adamantly denied committing any murders at a given facility, but after reviewing medical records, he admitted that he was involved in patients' deaths. Mm. So I think he's just kind of... Yeah. yeah. So, the legal impact. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) This is the part where everybody at home is like, how the fuck did this guy get through most of this? So... Cullen was largely able to move from facility to facility undetected because of the lack of requirements to report on suspicious behavior by medical workers nice. and, in, and inadequate legal protection for employee, uh, employers. New Jersey and Pennsylvania, like most states, required healthcare facilities to report suspicious deaths only in the most egregious cases, <gasps> and penalties for failing to report incidents were minor. So, what? Yes. So many states did not give investigators the legal authority to discover where a worker had previously been employed. Huh. Yeah. That's just the American healthcare system. Okay. Yeah. Employers feared uh, feared to investigate inc- incidents or give a bad employee reference for fear that such actions might trigger a lawsuit. Hmm. According to detectives and Colin himself, several hospitals suspected he was um, harming or killing patients, but failed to take appropriate legal actions. Yeah. Following Colin's criminal conviction, many of the hospitals where he had worked were sued by families of the victims. The, file, uh, the files and settlements against New Jersey hospitals all settled out of court and are sealed. <gasps> yeah. In some cases, individual workers took it upon themselves to informally try to prevent Colin from being hired or have him... Or have him terminated. So this comes back to the amazing nurses yeah. that he worked alongside. So some contacted nearby hospitals in secret or quietly spoke to their own superiors to alert them that they should not hire Cullen. When Cullen took a job at Sacred Heart Hospital in Allentown in June 2001, a nurse who had heard rumors about him at Easton Hospital advised her co-workers they threatened to quit in mass if Cullen was not immediately dismissed, which he was. So they Whoa. saved lives. Oh, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> um, then... Prompted by the Colon case, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and 35 other states, which scare, I want to know. The ones that did the, not The ones this. that did not, yeah, just so I can never go to the um, hospital in these states. Um, and 35 other states adopted new laws which encourage employers to give honest appraisals of workers' job performance and which give employers legal protections when they provide a truthful employee appraisal. So the New Jersey laws in particular form the model that the rest of the states would follow. First, the 2004 Patient Safety Act increased hospitals' responsibility for reporting serious, preventable, adverse events. <laughs> yeah, so at least we can go to the hospital feeling a little better That's about really, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, the 2005 Enhancement Act was a supplement to the Patient Safety Act and required hospitals to report certain details about their employees to the New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs. It also mandated that complaints and disciplinary records relating to a patient care be kept for at least seven years. Wow. Yeah, he's, and that to me, like, that's that's the story of Charles Cullen. Oh. That's crazy. Brother of Edward Cullen. Yeah. <laughs> the, the vampire. The vampire, the sparkly one. Yeah, that to me is insane. Oh. Like, the fact that he, because, like, it's, and it's, and it's so, and it's so true, like, uh, not true, um, it's so, I don't know the word I want to use, like, interesting, I guess, to me. Yeah. That, like, probably the most prolific serial killer in recorded history mm-hmm. 
it's not going to be like a Ted Bundy or... Like no, no, it's like, not... You know, it's going to be a dude who literally was like just killing people. Well, that's... I think that's even more horrifying and creepy because it's not something that is splashy. Yeah. Like, or for like, Or what we talked about earlier with serial killers, we always expect them to be like, you know, stabby, stabby and like... Yeah, yeah. And this guy was just... That and it's... You're, you're also going to these locations to get treatment and to get better and to mm-hmm. be on the mend, which... Obviously, all these other nurses and doctors were doing that and trying to stop this guy from working in these facilities. Yeah. But the overall system failed, and he was then employed, and then he was killing people with drugs that should be used to benefit people. hmm And that, to me, is... Also, like, I, I don't like IVs to begin with. Yeah. So... Oh, I fucking hate them. I hate them. Oh, I hate them so um, much. And they... I, like, I have to always, like, put... um like the blanket over my IV things. I can't look at it. Oh, I think it's, I remember even like, I thankfully have only ever had one once. Oh, no. Yeah. And it was, I know you've, you've been, you've been, (laughs) I've been IV'd many times. I thankfully, mine was like for a surgery. And thankfully I was like, I just remember like, I was so uncomfortable with it beforehand just because it stays. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what if you move your hand? Like, like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can have, as many tattoos as mm-hmm. possible, but the thought of, like, an intravenous, it just makes me, like, want to vom. Yeah, no, I'm not, I, I don't like it. I so, just... but then, like, the thing is, like, because they have access to, to the bag, obviously, to, like, to add, mm-hmm. you know, more fluids, or then to add the medicine, or, like, mm-hmm. pain reliev- pain relievers. So then doing that, that's what he was doing. He was, yeah. and that is terrifying. Well, actually, in some cases, he was also just coming in with syringes and giving people injections. Yeah. So, and if you're, you know, at a hospital, you're probably just like, you know, trying to sleep, trying to rest. And he could just be syringed while asleep. Mm hmm. That, that to me is like, I don't like it. Yeah. He's a, well, there's a movie coming out about him. Really? Yeah. And Eddie Redmayne is going to play him. (gasps) Oh, he's fantastic. Mm hmm. It's, it's called the good nurse. (gasps) Uh, When does it come out? Uh, it's coming out this year. Okay. Yeah, it'll be on Netflix, I think. Yeah. When does it come out? Maybe we inadvertently... <laughs> <laughs> look at us doing pop culture. Yeah. Uh, so, a first look at the film came during the Netflix 2022... Oh my god, 2022? Forgive me. Promotional video released on February 3rd, 2022. Look at that! So Yeah, and Jessica Chastain is in it. So. Oh, she's also wonderful. Yeah. They filmed it in Connecticut? Uh, that, that, that's what wrong. bothers you well i mean connecticut is right above us <laughs> <laughs> it's right above us like it's like it's part it's of the tri-state there's a different city there there is uh, is, uh, uh what's that name <laughs> what's the fucking thing what's the <laughs> state of, what was it it's uh I'm just i'm waiting for you to figure this one out but don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> i should know this why isn't it coming to me it's in my big book of big little it's, cities i know it's in, the, it's in there i've been through it fuck what's the name of the I keep wanting to say Stanford and it's not. It's uh what is it? Just tell me. No, I don't know. You know <laughs> Oh my god. Hold on, I'm oh it is Stan- it began filming in Stanford, Connecticut. <laughs> Does it right here? You can read. I did I'm it. proud of you. I did it. And I've been through Stanford because I was going to Boston. Yeah. And I've seen that in your little book. Yeah. It's the... not a big city. Not no, a big no. One. Stanford's the, not. The red crayon is just makes a little, little mark. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think this was a good episode for... Yeah, serious. this was a more, like, it was a more serious and infor- informative episode, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, I mean, I, this is... I think with serial killers, though, it's because this is these are real-life stories. They're not just someone yeah. told this tale and it could be disproved. This is, this is real yeah, this shit. this really happened. And that's what's terrifying. So. That, the Charles Cullen one killed me because there's so many things about it that is just, like, not your typical serial killer thing. I don't love it. I don't yeah. love the story. I mean, story. it's our neck of the woods, first don't of like all, it. which it, which is also rare because New Jersey, like there are oh, no. like I'm sure there's a ton of people here that are awful. No, it's yeah, I, I mean there, but like when you think of serial killers, generally you think of like California, mm-hmm. you think of um, like the Midwest. Uh, Baltimore no, the, the, has a the few. The Pacific too. Mid uh, Pacific what is it? Pacific Northwest is the yeah, word yeah. I'm trying to say. Um, I mean, everywhere has them. Yeah, yeah. But like for the most part, like you think of like highway killers, and you think of California mm-hmm. and Pacific Northwest. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Um, I think of the Midwest, then, too. I think of, like, those really sleepy towns. 
I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's just like the most prolific ones, like the Zodiac. Oh yeah, sure. Richard Ramirez, like they're all like California, and but yeah. and then it's also like that time period of like the seventies, the eighties, mm-hmm. you know. And this was, I mean, granted, this was technically the eighties because it was nineteen eighty eight to two thousand three, sure. but it was kind of late in the serial I think it's, killer. It's, it's recent enough, in our minds at least, we were we we were around for most of it. Yeah, I, yeah practically and, all of us. And, our neck our neck of the woods. Of yeah. and I think there's, I have a big thing with medical stuff. So, yeah, it's checked a lot of boxes for me. I'm just Thank glad you. that for the first time ever, despite the fact that it's generally a shitty hospital, <laughs> Overlook didn't find its way into this. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if he had worked at Overlook? I would have not been good. I mean, it's crazy enough that he was at Morristown, St. Barnabas, and Somerset Medical, and um, the one in Flemington. Yeah. that That's all. Oh my god. Those well, are like really Well I'm done for the night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah. I'm gonna be now a little even more concerned about my IV bags. Yeah. Make sure you're one of those states that um one of the thirty five other states that, you know, had some of these things passed. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> so that you good to check. Yeah. Helpful I knowledge. would wanna know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And thank you to all those healthcare workers that stopped him. Yes, which, as per usual, it's the nurses. Yeah. You know. And I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. Yeah, I want to watch the movie now. I didn't realize that there was actually going to be a movie Look about at it. Us so that was just promoting a happy this. Surprise. So, Eddie yeah. Redmayne out there. Yeah. Sh- Cut was... us a check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I am officially creeped out. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, well done. Thank you. I knew that one was going to do it to you. Yeah, no, I didn't like that one. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, listeners, thanks for uh, joining us on our first walk down Serial Killer Lane. Serial Killer Lane. That's a lover's lane. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> we will return to this topic, most likely with Jack the Ripper. Yeah, I think Jack will be the next one. Yeah. Jackie boy. Jackie boy. Johnny boy. Um, but, but um, I mean, there's a lot that we could talk about. Oh, yeah. So, stay creepy, creepers. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. They murdered. They stole. They did it in excess. Unlike other bandits of early America, they didn't do it for the money. They did it for the thrill and love of blood. They were the Harpy Brothers, and they have been called America's first true serial killers. This quote was attributed to Wallace Edwards in their text, Killer Brothers, A Biography of the Harpy Brothers, America's First Serial Killers.